many faces of disaster. From this grim history, we learn about prevention, about relief, and most important, about the reactions of people under stress. This is knowledge that should be brought to bear in training to meet possible disaster. It's a straightforward, practical task to deal with the mechanical problems of an effective fallout shelter. So much mass between the occupants and the source of radiation, so many square feet of space, so much ventilation, food, water, sanitary facilities. But other problems don't resolve themselves in pounds, cubic feet, or any other number. These are the problems peculiar to man himself his relations with other men, his emotions, and the way he responds to fear, deprivations, and unusual conditions. A man or woman in our society takes a lot of things for granted. More often than not, he has a family, a house or apartment. He has friends and is surrounded by ordinary social institutions, government, police, communications, transportation, personal possessions, clothing, food, furniture, and appliances, personal services, milkmen and postmen, salesmen and deliverymen, repairmen, and a thousand other services and things so common he doesn't even think about them being there. Suddenly, in a time of emergency, in this case the threat of thermonuclear attack, he has to leave many of these things, or they're taken away. In a public shelter, he could have four walls and a ceiling with maybe ten square feet of floor space for his personal use. Food, carefully rationed and austere. Water, precious and limited. Activities, tremendously restricted. He may be subjected to uncomfortable heat or cold, low oxygen, dirt, odors, he may even be separated from his family and friends and find himself surrounded by unfamiliar faces in a strange, cramped and unfamiliar place. In a real situation, he would also know the impact of the attack, the disaster itself. These unusual conditions will affect the way he behaves, the way he thinks, the way he feels. In the extreme, these reactions may take forms that are familiar to any reader of news magazines, such as irritability, aggressive temper, and sometimes even violence. Psychological withdrawal, escape from the situation. Immature, childish, even infantile behavior. Depression ranging from apathy and helplessness to utter despair. In a public shelter, a few individuals may react in any of these ways in varying degrees or slip from one to another at different times. And in a shelter, psychological sores left to fester can become a plague. This is Charlie Carey, a young handyman working in a middle-class neighborhood at the time of an attack. The shelter is in the basement of a local building. Hey, you, you, you there, you 
you have anything to do? Anything. Well, well, look, why don't you take these cups and these chairs and things? Just clear up this front area. Move it all over by the side wall, will you, boy? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, could you tell me, do you know where that bomb is? Yes. I, I couldn't get home. My mother's home with a baby. I mean, my sister's baby. We'll no, clear all me. that up later, boy. Clear the area up now. We've got work to do. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. You there, would you put one of those cups over here? Oh, well, the other man said... I need it. I'll get it. On the shelf there, the isopropyl alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Can't you read? I got it, Mr. Bruce. Helen, what happened here? I fell downstairs. Oh, gosh, is it all right? Listen, as soon as you feel better, fill out there. That's good for you, too, Helen. Okay? Hey! Hey, boy! How come you haven't cleaned up this area yet? Come on now, get with it. At first, Carrie, though nervous and excited, is anxious to help and to please, like most. But by the end of the second day, Well, 123 bottles of soda pop and not one salami sandwich. We used to have fresh sandwiches sent out for the kids every Friday. Yesterday was only Tuesday. Now, I'd like to change that broadcast. Go to jail. Go to regular jail. Not that close. Not just going to No, no, no. You don't understand. The gamma radiation is supposed to reduce itself by the power of 10. Say 100 Rentkins, then 10. But it hasn't. Well, that's because it's still falling. Carrie, you sweep up tonight. Yeah, sure. Carrie, you sweep up. I don't see anybody else around here breaking their back. But Charlie, that's because we're more the intellectual type. Everybody does his share, Carrie. Everybody does his share of Gavin. How much radiation do you say we're getting up here now? Up to an hour, I'd say, when you get around. Right? Yeah, roughly. That turns your blood, doesn't it? What turns your blood, Charlie, huh? Radiation. Turns it to water. <laughs> Where do you dig up these ideas, Charlie? That's not true, Charlie. Didn't you listen to the radiation lecture this afternoon? Oh, yeah, lectures. I'm too old for school. I never heard so much yak in all my life since I've been here. Especially from that fat, blowhard Gerber. Gary, I think you ought to watch your mouth. There are women and children down here. If you're too old for school, why don't you act like it? Tarzan, you know what would make us all feel a lot better, including yourself? Why don't you run a razor through those whiskers and a brush through that shaggy hair? Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, I was only teasing. Not. Are you worried about your mother and your sister? Here. Do it now. Well, I have to sweep up anyway, don't I? set in. Because Gary has become nasty, the other occupants try to avoid him.
But real trouble starts that evening during one of those remember when conversations that are bound to spring up when people are confined. And for dessert, chocolate souffle. You know what the children wanted to do? They wanted to pour over vanilla ice cream and have it topped with sliced bananas. You know what? They got it. <laughs> I wonder if Charlie's trying to work up an appetite or just show off his muscles. Rest. Let me tell you something. You can keep your chocolate souffle or whatever it is. You know what I'd settle for right this second? Why? Just a plain old simple fried chicken. A la what? A la rolled in flour and sprinkled with parsley and rosemary and salt and pepper and slip. Hey, Grant! Eat them, eat them, eat them. Eat them, they're biscuits. Pass them around. I don't want any anyway. I never saw such hungry people. What you need, Frank, is a little exercise. You're all scrawny. I bet Miss Prince has got bigger muscles than you have. Don't, Charlie. Cut it out, will you, Charlie? Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank, let me show you something, huh? Oh, come on, let me show you something. Come on, let me show you something. Keep your paws off me, punk. Calling up the punk, you and other ones. Get your car back, punk. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Tilford has a can of candy for his son. Can you imagine that, private candy? Mary Dennis, age 51, unmarried, a bookkeeper for 32 years, now a shelter occupant. My feet are killing me. There's just the two sick ones left. I'll bring theirs over. Making a man sign his name for a cracker, you'd think we were handing out filet mignon. Mary, how many biscuits did you give out? Need it for the supply record. Oh, hold your horses. I'm new on the food rationing. I was uncleaning until this morning. Besides, you've got those sick ones to take care of yet. Well, how much will it be with that? Told you we haven't gotten to them yet. <laughs> Tilford, my big supply lady. Oh. When I was at Allied Building and Supply, she was under me. <laughs> Couldn't keep the counts. Didn't have the heart to let her go, though, with her husband out of work all the time. And then behind my back, she's applying for a position at Farnham's and using me for a reference. <laughs> well, you know what Ben Farnham told her? He said, any girl that works under Mary Dennis has to be good. That's what I was thought of. She's my big supply lady. The way they run this place. Ben Farnham. <laughs> I could have had a position there. You know, I think I'll run over and speak to Ben Farnham one of these days. Mary, Farnham's is in Middletown. It was here. Don't throw those away. Why should crumbs go to waste? The hours pass. The questions about the attack, the fallout. And people try to keep themselves occupied when they can't sleep.
Miss Dennis tosses on the floor, thinking of food and of her discomfort, her head ringing with every click of the checkers on the board. Clack, clack, clack. Why don't you two keep those things quiet while people are trying to sleep? Oh, sorry, Miss Dennis. We'll try to be a little more quiet. How about another game? Every man for himself. Here with their secrets, that Tilfrey kid with his candy, and, and those two. Checkers for lunch, checkers for dinner, checkers all night long. Grown men. Should not be on the single girl's side anymore. By the fourth day, Miss Dennis has become sullen, speaking only to whine and complain. She doesn't eat her lunch or dinner rations and refuses an invitation to play cards. Mary, how'd you like a game of bridge? Everyone has heard her displeasure and some are uneasy under her testy gaze. But most of the occupants have fallen into a kind of routine and go about their business and their amusement. Anybody seen the checker boy? Well, it uh, must be around here somewhere. It couldn't have walked out of the shelter. Bobby, want to catch candy? Just Sweeter has been upset from the moment he entered the shelter. He has spoken to no one since the morning, except to ask the manager four or five times where his wife and child might be, a question that can't be answered yet. His tension has been obvious, and he's been wheedled and coaxed into a poker game with some of the other occupants. You know, they'd, they'd have been better off on a bicycle. Are you? Mm -hmm. Mr. Sweeter. Your turn. Oh, I'm sorry. What is it, two? Uh, we both check. Oh, uh, I passed. Two. Big plunges. I think I'll raise. Two. And two better. See that? And raise you two. 
Dick Steele, Joe. Hello. Oh, I'll see you. I wonder if that broadcast is about New York. Mr. Sweetick. Oh, I'll raise that. Two more. That's... Oh, come on. What is this stuff? Where do you get off checking and raising? You're as bad as playing with my wife. I didn't mean to. I don't play much, I told you. I, I don't feel like playing anyway. I'm sorry. Oh, don't call me. Oh, Mr. Cook, you shouldn't oh. talk to me. Oh. Just a guy. Well, that's not a matter. It's only a game. That's all I want to deal with. I know he's upset. We're all upset. Nothing yet, Mr. Sweeter. You shouldn't have let him upset you, Mr. Sweeter. be watching the TV now. I like to watch the TV when I come home at night. <laughs> My papa's in bed. You know, I thought sure they'd be in that warehouse shelter over on Calvert Street, but they weren't on the list. Now I keep thinking to myself, what if they went to bed or Grand Oak? You know, out there by the airbase. Who knows? My head keeps going and going. My wife's kind of nervous. And Bobby's so scared of strangers. He's five years old. And he's a kid that likes his daddy. Well, I... I wouldn't worry about it now, Mr. Sweeter. Well, they're probably in the big courthouse shelter. We haven't got a list from them yet. I think half the town must be in there. I was thinking I might take a run over there. Don't you dare think that. There's radiation out there. You know that. You just ought to lie down and try to get some rest. Can't give me permission to see the town. Mr. Sweeter hears and doesn't hear. And at night he doesn't sleep. He's hot and then cold. He feels the pressure of the unfamiliar bodies around him, the dark isolation of the crowded room and his loss of contact with the world outside. The afternoon of the second day, the courthouse list is posted on the bulletin board, and the name Sweeter does not appear on it. Dick, Dick, they're all right. They're all right. No other name? Well, is there another list? Not just yet. We'll be getting others later, Mr. Sweeter. Mr. Sweeter, can I get you a cup of coffee? How's it going? Hey, sweetie, you want to sit in for a while? Radiation is decreasing. Looks like we're going to be all right in here. Still pretty bad out there. Well, it's dropped off quite a bit. But it's still pretty dangerous out there. Late that afternoon, there is a power failure. The air becomes dank and humid. Activities are curtailed. Two more lists have come in, and still no word for him. And she smiled as she passed me by. She looked so neat from her two bare feet to the crown of her nut brown hair. Such a winsome elf, I was ashamed of myself, for to see I was really there. 
From Bantry Bay up to Derry Cay and from Galway to Dublin town. No maid I've seen like the brown Colleen. She's the star of the county down. As she onward sped, sure I scratched my head and I looked with a feeling rare. And I says, says I to a passerby. Hello, Shelter G73. Yeah. Oh, just a second, I'll get paid. Okay, go ahead. Frank Caldwell. Jan Caldwell. Not so fast. Francis Caldwell. Peter if there are survivors in one fallout shelter, Chances are there are many others in the same area. That's only logical. Pro. How do you spell that? P R O H A S K A. Prohaska. Harvey Raym. What's that? Ramos. Evelyn Sweeter. Robert Sweeter. Is that it? Oh, yes, we got that this morning. Good. Thank you. Where's Sweeter sleeping, do you know? No, I don't. This will cheer him up. Sure. <laughs> Some negative reactions to living in shelters are to be expected and dealt with. How? Obviously, anticipation would come first, training people in advance of any disaster so that they would know what to expect and what they are expected to do. Next would be activity, the do-it-yourself approach. People in the first stages of alarm are often docile and willing to be led, and some problems can be avoided if people are given something definite and useful to do. Information and spiritual considerations, recreation and useful activity all help to build morale. But in many cases, people will have to be dealt with individually. The shelter manager isn't a psychologist, but he is aware of human relations. He will find that understanding and common sense can go a long way. How could it have been prevented in the case of angry young Charlie Carey? Or Mr. Sweeter, who escaped only into worse danger, sickness, and possibly death? What could you have done to prevent negative incidents like these, to cope with them, or to encourage positive reactions? Thank you.